dangers we face. In 1941, after London had been relentlessly bombed by the Luftwaffe, and with his countrymen living in fear, Prime Minister Winston Churchill made a statement to his people about the fearful circumstances in which they found themselves. Never, never, never give in, he said. Listen to what he said. Never give in, never give in, never, never, never. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force, never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. Sir Winston Churchill. And you know, you and I live in a dangerous world. You can turn on the television, listen to the news, read the papers, look on the internet. We live in a dangerous world. And you know, as followers of Christ, you and I, we face many dangers, spiritual dangers especially. We have an enemy that's always out to get us, to destroy us, to defeat us. So we face many dangers ourselves. And one of the dangers we face is the danger of fear. You see, if they are, our enemy can cause us to be afraid, then it paralyzes us. And it keeps us from doing what God wants us to do. It keeps us from being productive as an individual. Fear can cause us to miss out on what God has for you and me. Now, as we read in the Scripture, decades before, Jerusalem had been invaded by a Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar. And when Nebuchadnezzar invaded Jerusalem, he destroyed the temple. He destroyed the walls around the city. So now, fast forward several decades... God's Spirit put in Nehemiah's heart and mind to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls. Now, an ancient city without walls was not only a disgrace, but it was vulnerable to attack. And a walled city was a strong and proud city. Think of it like this. Think of how odd or strange it would be for you to have a, a nice house, but no doors. Think if there was no doors on your house. Because see, the door is like, a, is, is like a really nice place in your home. It's a, it's a place where when people come to visit, they go through the front door. And so you usually want your front door to look nice and you usually have a nice wreath on it or, you know, a plaque or something, and you have it really nice, and you have the door, and the open door means, hey, you're welcome to come in. But at night, you what do you do? You close the door, and you usually lock it. And there, it's a form of security. And that's the way it was in the ancient cities. A city without walls was, it was a disgrace to that city. And also, it made it a security problem. It was vulnerable to attack from the enemies. See, a walled city was a strong and proud city. So God worked through the Persian king's heart, whom Nehemiah worked for, to allow Nehemiah to return to Jerusalem, his former home. And he allowed him to go back for a specific amount of time. And he was able to rebuild the walls around the city. But you see, when Nehemiah got to Jerusalem to rebuild and repair the walls and the gates around Jerusalem, the enemies of the people made serious threats to stop the rebuilding of the walls. See, they didn't want to have the city proud again. They didn't want the city to be secure. They liked having it vulnerable because they could intimidate them they could attack them. They could steal from them. So when they heard that Nehemiah had come back to rebuild the walls and replace the gates, they started making threats, threats to attack them, to kill the workers. So naturally, the workers were overwhelmed by fear. 
And so the building of the walls came to a halt because nobody wanted to be killed. <laughs> nobody wanted to be attacked. So they were overwhelmed. As we read, there was a little saying that the, the strength of the laborer fell since there's so much rubble. You know, they were overwhelmed by the job. And then we'll never be able to rebuild this wall. They were overwhelmed not only by, by fear, but by the job itself. Nehemiah had to deal with this danger of fear. And you and I, as followers of Christ, you and I have to deal with our, our, our fears because it is a danger to us. You and I have to face our fears, and we have to deal with it in a, in a good, constructive way, or else we'll be set back. We'll miss out on what God has for us. So what can you and I learn from this passage of Scripture about overcoming fear? What can you and I learn? Well, first, admit your fear and ask for God's help. Admit your fear and ask for God's help. And you say, well, Danny, that, that's sort of obvious, isn't it? It is, but why do we not do that? <laughs> why is it when we're overwhelmed by fear, we drink, we pop some pills, we run away, we cower, we panic, we become negative like the people were saying about the wall, oh, it's too much work, we just can't do it, we'll never get it done. That's not honoring to the Lord. <laughs> and yet you say, oh yeah, you know, we need to admit our fear, we need to ask for God's help, but why don't we do it? It says, everywhere you turn, they attack us. The worker said, you know, it doesn't matter where we are, where we're stationed along the wall, where we're working. These enemies, they come and they attack us. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw it into confusion. So we prayed to our God. So we prayed to our God. See, the people were working on rebuilding the walls around the city they were overcome with fear from their enemies, threats of these attacks. Because you had these enemies, they even named them Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and, and the other mosquito bites and dog bites and whatever the bites they were. But all these enemies, they came against them and threatening them. But you know what I admire about Nehemiah? He didn't stop the building project. He just said, oh, you know what? This is just too much. Uh, we just can't do this. It's too dangerous, and, and uh, we're overwhelmed. We just can't do it. What I admire about Nehemiah being a good leader, he didn't stop the building project. He didn't run in a panic. But you know what he did? He prayed to God for protection. He humbled himself before God and said, God, we need your protection. We need your help. And then, what I even like more about him is he armed the workers. Today, it'd be like, okay, uh, okay, guys, I need you to come in. Here's a 9 millimeter. Here's a Glock 9 millimeter for you. Here's, some, here's at least 200 rounds of ammo. Uh, here's a, here, hey, takes these Remington 12-gauge riot action shotguns. Take these. You know, he, he, he said, look, I want you to arm yourselves. Swords, spears, bows. Arm yourselves. Now, I don't want to divide, and I don't want to upset anybody, but let me tell you something. God gives his people the right to defend themselves. Okay, there's nothing wrong with you defending your life. And thank God for our founders, our forefathers, who, who said we should have that right as citizens, that we should have a right to defend ourselves. Nehemiah... First of all, prayed to God and said, God, we need your help. We need your protection. Because he said, God, you've told me to rebuild this wall. You want your city to have protection. And I'm here doing it, but I've got some problems. <laughs> I've got enemies, and they're wanting to kill us, Lord. We need your help. And then he told the people, I want you to arm yourselves. And did you know that even today in Jerusalem, when Jewish men and women go out to the fields to work, did you know you'll see a, you'll see a rifle? 
You'll see them carrying weapons, even today. It's called the Nehemiah principle. You defend your life. See, what happens a lot of times, we try to take things into our own hands, and we, we arm ourselves, but we don't pray. <laughs> we try to take some steps, but we leave God out of the equation. But what I respect about Nehemiah is he went to God in prayer, he asked God for help, and then he did some practical things. You know, we're going to arm ourselves, we're going to defend ourselves. Now, when you're overcome by fear, it can paralyze you. It can keep you from doing what God wants you to do. Now, I don't know what it would be. I mean, you know, God may want, be wanting you to, to, to help a family member that's got a problem or a friend or a coworker. God has impressed upon your heart and mind to reach out to that person, but you're fearful because you're thinking, well, what if they're offended? What if, what if they... Um, what if they fuss me out, cuss me out? What if, what if they uh, reject me? So we allow fear to overwhelm us and keep us from doing what God wants us to do. Maybe God has a ministry for you. Maybe God's Spirit has spoken to your heart and mind, maybe through the Scriptures, to do a certain ministry. But you're like, well, I just can't do that. I'm not, I don't think I'm that good. I just don't know if I can help. There's other people that can do it, other people that are smarter. But God wants you to do that ministry. There's needs that you can meet, that you can help people with, but fear is keeping you from doing it. It keeps you from being productive, doing what you're supposed to do. See, the danger of fear keeps us beaten down. It keeps us defeated. It, it makes us cower. It makes us panic. And that's not what God wants his children to do. That's not how he wants us to live. Pray. Pray. Pray is talking to God. Admit to him that you're afraid. Ask for his help. Instead of running and panicking, pray. Ask God to help you. Ask God to help you to face your fear. Ask God to help you overcome your fear. Ask God to help you in whatever's causing you to be afraid. I've told you before that that time I, um, when I was with the Sheriff's Department, I was on routine patrol I got a call that there was a man, a, a husband, who um, had, was holding his wife and children hostage. He had a rifle, and he said he was going to kill them, and he would kill any police officer that responded. And it was right during like, sort of like a rush hour time, and everybody was sort of busy. And they said, um, we don't have any backup available at this time, but we will send backup. And so fear came to me. I'm like, well, you know, I, you know, this is not a good situation. I could die. I was wearing a vest, but it don't protect you from rifle fire. It may slow it down, but just to still go through it. The vest I was wearing, it could. And so I was thinking, Lord, <laughs> whoo, I need you. Now, I, I said, Lord, you Help me to remember all the training I've had from my military police experience to now to the police academy. Help me to remember everything I've learned and help me. Please protect me. And I remember God's peace just came over me. Now, it didn't mean that I was like, hey, I'm John Wayne, I'm Superman, but I was not paralyzed by fear. I wasn't shaking uncontrollably and thinking, oh, no, I'm going to die. I was like, okay, God is with me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do my best. I may get shot. I may get killed, but I'm going to do my best. So I parked um, away from the house. I didn't want him to see my car. And I ran to the back of the house and looked in, 
and I saw his wife, and I, and I, I got her to come to the back door, and I said, tell me the situation. She said, he's passed out drunk on the couch. <laughs> Praise God. That's one of the things I'm glad somebody was drinking. <laughs> so I went in and got the rifle and took him to the hospital. I'm saying you can be overwhelmed by fear and be beaten down, and that's going to you know, that's going to cause you to miss out on what God has for you. It's going to cause you not to be productive as a person. You're going to be defeated. You got to deal with that. Or you can say, God, I'm afraid of this situation. I need your help. And do what you can do. In Psalm 56, verse 3, David said, when I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust. I will not fear what can man do to me. Now think about that. That was David, the warrior king. And David was afraid. He says, when I am afraid, what do you do? He says, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in God whose word I praise. In God I trust. I will not fear. And then he asks, what can man do to me? If God is with me, he can't do anything. So when David was afraid, he trusted in God. He trusted in God's word. So admit your fear and ask God's help. Ask for God's help in your situation, in your circumstances. The second thing we learn from this passage of Scripture, admit your dependence on God's protection. Admit your dependence on His protection. Nehemiah said, After I made an inspection, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, Don't be afraid of them. Remember the great and awe-inspiring Lord. And fight for your countrymen, your sons and daughters, your wives and homes. Again, did you hear that, folks? God gives you a right to defend yourselves, to defend your families, to defend your country. Nehemiah trusted in God for his help, for his protection. Matter of fact, he, he said he was dependent on the awe-inspiring Lord, our God who is awe-inspiring, our God who can do anything, who, do, who does miracles, who does great things. I'm trusting in Him. I'm dependent on Him for our protection. And though He armed the people and He organized their positions, you know, He put families, you know, you're going to really stick together with your family and you can trust your family, usually. <laughs> usually, I'm saying uh, generally speaking. Now, some in my family, I wouldn't trust, you know, I wouldn't trust them with anything. But for the most part, families stick together. You trust your family. So Nehemiah, in his brilliance as a leader, he put the people together in family groups. And he armed the men. And he said, now, now some of you stand guard and the others of you work. And that's what they did. And the people that were working felt better. Now they could work and they didn't have to worry about, you know, you know somebody coming up behind me. They could work. Because why? They had guards. Uncle Reuben and Uncle John's guarding us. Daddy's got his sword with him. Hey, I'm, I feel better now. So the people were armed. And though... They were, Nehemiah depended on the Lord for his protection and help. I think Nehemiah may have remembered the psalmist's words in Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2. God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not be afraid. I love that scripture verse. I'll never forget Billy Graham quoting that verse at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. At the service right after the 
September 11th, 2001 attack. That's when his health was declining. He said, God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. I love that. I'm like, wow, what a verse. And I think Nehemiah remembered the psalmist's words. And Nehemiah says, no, we're not going to be afraid. We're not going to stop this project that God has told us to do. We're going to keep building and we're going to keep working. And hey, here, get your sword, get your bow and arrow, get your weapons, and some of you stand guard and the rest of you work. And we're going to get this done. Did you know that in less than 60 days, <laughs> They were able to rebuild the walls and gates around Jerusalem. Isn't that amazing? And they didn't have, you know, all the machinery and all the neat tools, you know, you can go to Home Depot and get. No. But in less than 60 days, they were able to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem and the gates. Once again, Jerusalem was a proud and strong and secure city. When you're overwhelmed by fear, and we're all going to have those moments, admit it to God. Admit your dependence on Him. You know, psychologists, psychiatrists will tell us the, the first step in overcoming an addiction is admitting that we have an addiction and admitting that we need help. And that's the first thing you and I need to do. We need to turn to God we need to say, God, I need you. God, I'm depending on you. Look to God for his help in these fearful times. Now, you do what you can that's honoring to God. You do what you can do. But trust in him for his help and protection. Nehemiah armed the people. But he was still looking to God for help and for protection. Because, you know, weapons can only do so much. And remember God's word to Joshua when Joshua was overwhelmed by fear. You remember Moses had died and now the leadership went to Joshua and Joshua had to take on this role after following the great Moses. He had to take on this role of leading these hundreds of thousands of people, nomadic people. They weren't trained in warfare. They, they didn't have great weapon. The enemies outnumbered them. The enemies had superior weapons. And now Joshua had to lead this people to take the land that God had promised. Can you imagine his fear? But when he was overwhelmed, this is what God said, haven't I commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Did you hear what God told Joshua? I've commanded you, Joshua. <laughs> I'm telling you, you be strong and courageous. Don't think about it. Don't try. God said, I command you, you be strong and courageous. Why? Because the Lord, your God, is with you. And you know the song we sang in the beginning? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? Did you know that God's Spirit, the Almighty God who created this universe, the Almighty God who has defeated Satan and his demons and death, did you know that God, the same God that we worship and the same God that Nehemiah looked to for help, did you know the Spirit of God lives in you? That's why we sing, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So God is with you. And look, I'm preaching to myself. I'm fearing some things right now. In my life, I have some fears. And I'm constantly daily having to take my fears to the Lord and say, God, I need you because <laughs> I'm afraid. I've got some fears. Sometimes when I hold my, 
my little Amelia, my, my little granddaughter. There's some fears I have in thinking of the world she's got to grow up in. But you and I, as followers of Christ, need to be strong and courageous, not discouraged, not overwhelmed, not living in fear, but be strong and courageous. Why? Because our God is with us. And that's what comforts me. Well, no matter what I have to face and no matter what happens, I know that God is with me. And no matter what my little granddaughter is going to have to face in whatever world she's going to grow up in, God will be with her. I have to rely on that. And I want you to know that God is with you today. And I want you to let his presence strengthen you. I want you to let his presence give you the courage you need to deal with the fearful circumstances that you find yourself in. Nehemiah and his people trusted in God's protection, and they continued the work that God had commanded them to do. They didn't stop. Like I said, in less than 60 days, they had the job done. Nehemiah said, when our enemies heard that we knew their scheme and that God had frustrated it, <laughs> every one of us returned to his own work on the wall. We were doing what God told us to do, and we didn't let anyone stop us. Now, you and I, we do face many dangers. But the danger of fear, it can keep us from doing what God wants us to do. Not only as individuals, but as a church family. We don't need to let the fear of our debt, we don't let, let the fear of our numbers, we don't need to let the fear of this person or that family or this group. We don't need to let the fear of government or the fear of any other outside group keep us from doing God's work. Let's do what we need to be doing as God's people. And when you're overcome by fear, and you will be if you are not now, look to God for his help and protection. You may say, Danny, I, the doctor told me this, and it's just over. You know what? I don't care what the doctor has said, and I don't care what he, how bad it is. You look to God for help. Whatever your circumstances, if you're overwhelmed today by fear, if you're afraid, you look to God for his help and his protection. Pray. That means you go to God and talk to him. Tell him about your situation. Read his word. His word is filled with not only events where God helped his people overcome fear, but it's filled with his promises that he is with us, that he'll help us. Do what is honoring to the Lord. Let's have a prayer together. Father, again, thank you for your love for us and showing that love so clearly through your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, thank you that, that even though you were overwhelmed by fear and dread about the cross, about the horrible abuse you knew that awaited you, the horrible pain, the torture, even that moment when you and your father would break fellowship, you still face the cross. You faced it because your father was with you. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for your resurrection from the dead. Thank you that you did defeat death, the grave, evil. And Lord Jesus, empower us today as your children, as your people. Let us be about your work. Let us be about the ministry you have given us to do. 
let us remember that you all are the awe-inspiring Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray in your name. Amen.